My name is Professor Hugh Possingham. I'm a Professor of Mathematics and Ecology at the University of Queensland. In this section, we're going to talk about managing fish populations in marine and subtropical ecosystems. Fisheries, at their very best, can sustain livelihoods of local communities. They can be productive and sustainable. They provide protein and they provide income. And also, even when we do extract fish from subtropical environments and tropical environments, that can also maintain biodiversity in those systems. At their worst, however, fisheries can be catastrophic. Entire fish populations can collapse, the ability to harvest food can diminish to nothing, leaving the people in poverty without a source of income, and also the biodiversity in those areas can be substantially diminished even if some elements of the biodiversity are not directly harvested. So, given this can be very good or very bad, the important issue is how do we actually have sustainable long-term fisheries? Now, to answer this question, we need to understand two things. One is how do fish populations grow? And the second thing is how do we manage the fishes themselves? All species have population growth curves. And initially, when populations are very small, well below their carrying capacity, they increase rapidly. The per capita growth rate is high. As the population grows, however, the growth rate declines. They can't grow exponentially forever, otherwise the sea would be full of whales. So when a population starts off very small, here at the beginning, possibly because of over-harvesting, what happens through time is it grows almost exponentially. However, if that exponential growth persisted forever, as I've said before, the, the sea would be full of, full of whales. So there must be some factors that stop exponential growth. One of these factors is uh, limitations on the amount of food and habitat. And another factor is interaction with other organisms. So if the food runs out, the birth rates drop. Or as the population gets bigger, predation rates and disease increases. So the population eventually stabilises, and we say that it stabilises around its carrying capacity. So here we start again with a small population of whales, well below the carrying capacity. And in this case, uh, the density dependent factors kick in and the population stabilises at some reasonable level. The second thing we need to know is that different species of fish have different sorts of population dynamics. Species like turtles and whales, which mature at an, a large age, have populations that can grow very slowly. However, small-bodied fish, like parrotfish and many invertebrates, have populations that can grow extremely rapidly. 